I was talking about you guys before the show that uh, I'd never talked about, and I've got plenty of stories from this job, but I'd never talked about this rental car company that I worked for, like right, right out of college. And because it turns out that when you graduate, this was like, so this was like seven years ago, 2013, when this, when a lot of this happened, 2013, 14, mostly. And I, I worked at a rental car company and it doesn't really matter what company it is. It's the kind where you have to dress up like you're going to a, a you know, a bar mitzvah and really you, you just look like a retard renting cars in a suit, which sucks. And so, and it's the kind where you have to pick someone up. And so I started working at this company and one of the first things they do is they're like, and I'm right out of college, so I'm ready to be like, all right, I'm not going to make much money. I'm barely going to make any money. This is going to suck. I'm going to be working so much for this job, and I'm barely going to be bringing home anything, but whatever. You got to start somewhere. And so I started working for this company. They sent me down to uh, their, their like main city where they train all the new people, and they give you a roommate in these situations. And they pair you up with a random guy. I got, I was 22 at the time, I think, just turned 22. This guy was like 26, 27, Mormon, already had three kids. And there's an old adage. When I lived in Idaho, I, I learned a lot of Mormon adages. And one of them about Mormons is never go fishing with one Mormon because they'll drink all your beer. Always bring a second Mormon so that they won't drink in front of each other. And so I'm like, trying to get ready for my first job and training and stuff. And I'm like, man, yeah, I had no perspective. I'm just worried about not getting something right. And so we get in there that night. I'm like ready to buckle down and study the little book and everything. I'm, I'm in the room and he comes in and he's like, Hey, you're Taylor, right? And I'm like, yeah, you must be uh, Andy. He's like, yeah, yeah. Real nice to meet you, man. Real nice to meet you. So where are you from? We have this little talk and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you want to do tonight? It's like, uh, st st we're, we're on a work thing. It was my first ever work trip. And I was like, I, I assume you do work all the time on these. I'm trying to learn so I don't look like a fool tomorrow. And he's like, nah, I'm, I'm sure we'll be fine. Listen, you want to like go to a bar or something? And I was like, not not particularly. It's already like 9 p.m. And he's like, how about we do, there's a liquor store across the street. Let's go to the liquor store and we'll get a couple things. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll have a few beers tonight. And so I go over to the liquor store with him. I grab a six pack and I'm just waiting at the front. For like five, six minutes, which is a long time to wait standing there with a guy you don't know. And eventually I'm like, where the fuck is this motherfucker? And I start walking around and he is like picking up every bottle of liquor, like fascinated with it. Like, oh my God, like the forbidden fruit for this guy. He loads up a mini cart with, we're there for four nights <laughs> and he has enough booze for us to go on a three week bender. <laughs> Both. He has no idea. Just he loads it up and he's coming to the front, all fucking smiles. This guy, and he's like, "You got all your stuff?" I'm like, "Got like one six pack of Bud Light." And he's like, "All right." We so you check everything out, go back to the room. I start like drinking a beer while I'm doing everything. I turn around after maybe 15, 20 minutes. He's drank half a bottle of vodka by himself, already blackout drunk, and this guy stayed blackout drunk for the next four days he was showing up to like the work things drunk he was out of fucking control it would we would finish something up he turns out mormons get degenerate as shit once they get a little liquor in them maybe that, that's a rule there was one night he was begging me he's like come on man it's our last night here come on let's go to the hot tub at the hotel and i'm like okay let's, let's go to the hot tub he brings the free glass thing you use to rinse your mouth out next to the sink and a bottle of Jack Daniels that he sets next to the hot tub. And we're sitting there with like two other normal people. And I like have, I don't even think I brought a beer because it wasn't allowed. And he gets wasted here. And he spends the entire last night and the second to last night vomiting and keeping me awake until like four in the morning. And it was over and over. And at the end of it, he's like, talking to me like we experienced a hangover two style adventure <laughs> where it's, it's like man crazy times right and it's like i haven't been drunk the whole time we've been here i've had like three beers at a time and he's like nah dude dude we got we did crazy stuff anyway dude see you later bro uh reheard from him because he worked in a different state different area uh he had to go to rehab for alcoholism, which apparently started on that little trip. He and I had. <laughs> so I got to watch the beginning of a flower blossom of addiction. <laughs> and I actually encouraged it because I thought he'd be able to handle it. So yeah, that guy did it. 
another thing about rental car places, do not buy the insurance if you have your own insurance. They're going to try and scare you because they tell the salespeople to scare the shit out of you. And what I discovered working out in Idaho with this, where there's a lot of Hispanic people who like the first generation don't speak English. And so they have their kids talk to you. The only people who buy insurance are people who don't need it. And the only people who don't buy insurance are people who do need it. Where like, I can't count the number of times I'd be like at a fucking airport location and some person would come up like uh, some Mexican lady and then her very young, like seven year old kid. And I'd be like, Hey, I can help you, ma'am. And then the kid would have to say like, we want a car. And I'd be like, that's great. Uh, can you tell your mom that I need her license and her, her credit card? And she hands me a license and a very dented debit card. And I have to be like, no, this is a, it's a, 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 deb, a debit. It's a debit card. You need a credit card. She's like, no, it's credit. I use a credit card. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you can, you can hit credit when you're buying a Diet Coke at a 7-Eleven. But when you're renting a $75,000 Yukon, you can't, you can't run it as, as that. You, you have $75 in your account. And like I, the number of times, I didn't try and sell like rich people any insurance. Like I was the fastest at writing the tickets because I'd be like, you got insurance, brother? You'd be like, yeah. It's like, you're fucking perfect. You're fucking good, dude. Should I buy the insurance? <laughs> no, no. Like, get out of here. I don't get commission for this. Why the fuck would I rip you off? But then when there would be like a Hispanic woman who comes up, I'm like, man, please. If you wreck this, Javier, can you tell your mom what I'm saying right now? <laughs> if, if you wreck the Yukon, that's an $80,000 car. Ocho thousand car. <laughs> that's not. <laughs> you know, Ocho thousand car. So if you wreck this car, you have to pay for the whole thing. The whole car, Javier, Javier, you're obviously uh, so you're looking at the vending machines, so Javier, Javier, <laughs> the whole car, see, see, yeah, whole car. It's like, so if you pay $20 extra a day, if you wreck it, you don't pay anything. But if you wreck it, your life and your children's lives are ruined. Just, just pony up and do it. They would never buy the insurance. And it felt like 10% of the time they'd come back and get absolutely fucked. The people who would buy it were like rich white yuppies who already had fantastic AAA or something and would just drop $20 for no reason a day on it. So never buy that shit. There was so much tomfoolery and nonsense. Always check your contracts from those people because they will sneak shit in in order to get sales. Like they will tell you. I, I There was one skeevy motherfucker that I worked with that was the worst about this. The forestry registry came in out of uh, Idaho where I was. Apparently that's where the biggest conglomerate of these firefighters come from. And then they all moved from there down to fight the wildfires in California. And they had set contracts. But because we worked on a DOS system, a DOS prompt system, we could manipulate the contracts. And so there was this one bitch who, Amy, if you're out there, I hope life is going terrible for you i hope it sucks i hope you got divorced after you left us and so because what she did is they have like sales goals and if you hit a certain thing they incentivize us by like you can just go home you can go home if you want to do that this bitch would take twenty thousand dollars in sales and apply it to a forest registry contract and those guys don't give a shit they just, they'll sign whatever and so then if i'm returning a car on the return line and it pulls up that what was supposed to be a $1,200 rental for two weeks to the forest registry is actually a $35,000 fee. Do you know how upset a group of dirty firefighters get when you tell them they owe $35,000 for that? They get so upset. And then I have to call like the fire commissioner of it and tell him, I'm so sorry, I got to refund $35,000, the cost of a nice fucking Optima that they already paid us. And then I get yelled at. That shit was the fucking worst. That job sucked. <laughs> Another thing they would fucking do is I worked at the airport many times going all the way to 2 a.m. And you'd be there with the manager and you would run out of cars, just out. And I would have 70 reservations at 1 a.m. by myself, standing at the counter with my little fucking tie like a retard. And I would just <laughs> hordes of people coming down the escalator to come to the rental place. And I'm just like trying to amp myself up. Like it's game seven. Like, whoo, all right. All right. You're going to get yelled at by at least 75 of those people. It's okay. It's okay. Then they all like get in line. 75 out of 70, <laughs> 75 out of 77. They're going to yell at me. Okay. And some of them have wives. Some of them have wives there. None of them though. Cause they're getting in. They get in at two in the morning. Most of them off of planes that were so delayed. Mm -hmm. They just want their, and they just want to go home. 
And they have and a they reservation, show, but you didn't reserve they, one. They have a reservation, and every time, 15 minutes before that plane lands, the manager would go, well, it seems like you got a good handle of things, Taylor. I'm out. And they would leave. <laughs> just be me there and they would come in and you talk to the first guy in line and he's like slaps his fucking credit card and license on the table not pleased boom reservation thompson we're out of we're out of cars mr thompson what i have a reservation the best you could hope for in that situation is that the guy would say the seinfeld line and i would go <laughs> But like that, that was the best you could hope. Usually you would get screamed at, berated. They'd ask for your name. They'd like call and complain. I'd have to try and be like, you know, the reason they did this is because they're trying. I, by the end of my tenure at this company, I was like totally like uh, Stockholm syndrome with the shitty customers. I'd be like, <laughs> we're all in this together, guys. We're all in this together. I'm so sorry. I hate this as much as you do. I make $30,000 a year to get screamed at. I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm not happy at all. And just doing that. <laughs> you want to rent my car? I could use the cash. <laughs> what you get to do, you know what you get to do then, is I have to like lean over and talk to the Hertz guy and be like, Tom, please, please, can you get some of these people going? He's like, Taylor, I'm so sorry, dude. We got like two cars and I got to save them. And so I would have to stand there until like 4.30 in the morning with every one of these people calling cab companies to take them where they need to go, then paying for it over the phone with the corporate card. And then after one of the companies runs out of cabs, I have to find a new cab company for all these people. It was the fucking worst job. It <laughs> it yelled at constantly. The I would only be so mad. Of, it was awful. The only good part of that job is that if somebody came in hot and like you could even whiff just the slightest of alcohol, you could shut it down. Nope, not written to you. you. You smell like whiskey. You smell like, and it was only a couple times that a person would come in like stumbling drunk and yell at you because you wouldn't rent them the, the car they wanted. Also, there's a fundamental misunderstanding about how reservations work. You do not reserve the car. You're not reserving anything. That's how shows... reservations work, though. No, for everywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that... Rent car companies, they shouldn't call it a reservation. They should call it a consideration. They should call we'll it a prepayment because that's what it is. They're just, they're just you're just signing. Woody up. and I showed up at a hotel once, and they'd given our reservation away. Oh yeah, and I think we said, "I don't think you know how a reservation works." <laughs> yeah, I think we did. <laughs> how a reservation works. <laughs> Do you know how many times I wanted to leap over that counter and strangle someone to death for saying that Seinfeld line for the hundredth time that day? And it was infuriating because the the fucking why didn't you put a sign up that said? All out of cars. We would, but there's still 80 reservations for the top of the hour. And they still think that when they hop off the plane, they're getting it. Yeah. If like, there was no more cars, but I had a reservation, I would think you only have the reserved cars left. I'm sure you have the vocabulary to make a sign that explains that. These people are not wanting to read. <laughs> yeah, but you... If you could just peel off 20% of them, you know? I think I'd still need to hear it. I think I'd still be like, but wait, I have a reservation. Because I, I know how reservations are supposed to work. Yeah. There was, there I was make one... a sign. All, reserva all reservations are null and void. We are out of cars. Zero with the word zero. Cars. Now, are you out of cars or are you out of clean cars? What if I have low standards? If So usually the way it works is... Like those late night ones, there's no car preps there. And so you're literally out. But what, how it is sometimes, if it's like 5 p.m. and someone shows up and they have, have a reservation, it's like, I need a minivan. I have to like phone over to the, the car preps who are the most degenerate group of, of no good nicks on earth. But you leave anything in your rental car, that shit's getting stolen by one of the ex-cons that work in the car cleaning. <laughs> I would get asked twice I knew that. A day, they were gifts all along. <laughs> twice a day, I would have to go down there with those, those animals and be like, did you guys find an iPad? And they'd be like, nope. I'm like, <laughs> smile at me. And I'd be like, you motherfuckers, can you please give me the iPad? And they're like, what iPad? And I'm like, I, I don't, I don't get paid enough to deal with this. And so I just go back <laughs> and say, I don't, I don't have that. We just had, if somebody lost a Garmin or something, we just had a bucket of them. Someone could have walked up and been like, hey, I lost a hundred Garmins. I'd be like, just fucking <laughs> <laughs> just take them. I don't give a shit. A so, Garmin, the GPS, like, or yeah, those... something like that. Okay. This was like 
seven years ago. And so people were still using some of those. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of other shit that was just the fucking worst. Oh, we had, uh, I had a guy, I got in like a 30 minute argument with a guy that he was smoking in the car and he was saying that you, there's no evidence of that. You, I know my rights. There's no evidence that I was smoking in this car. And so I did what they t- teach you to do, which is like open up the back rear uh, front door. Look at the bottom. There's a pile of ash there. That's how you know they smoked. Didn't have to do that, though, because there were dozens of cigarette burns in the seat in the upholstery. Wow. It was a Kia Soul, and it looked like it had been to Vietnam and back. He put out his cigarettes on the upholstery? Dozens of times. Just just speckled shotgun looking thing. There was no evidence. I, I have it. I, I'll have to send you guys the picture. I guarantee if I go back to like 2013, I have that shit on my phone because I t- you'd find weird shit in people's cars. You'd find dildos, sex toys. We found a costume once. Where Those you are dress- gifts for the cleaners, Taylor. And I'm uh, surprised you're less appreciative. <laughs> one, one guy we found, he called back to ask. I'll send this too. Uh, it's a giant costume that you wear over your whole body and it has an S on it and it makes you look like a sperm. <laughs> <laughs> costume and so this guy had to call at one point and he was like yeah i left a costume in the back of the car like, what kind of costume man he's like it's a sperm costume <laughs> you know the I costume had- taylor i know i had i'll send you that picture too at the time i just wanted to hear him say it i had the sperm costume right in the office it was making me laugh so hard and uh yeah the- yeah, I'm actually wearing it right now. This thing's pretty kick ass. <laughs> pretty cool. No, I didn't put it on. It smelled weird. And uh, yeah, the only place worse in the air, probably it was a little bleachy. But the only place worse in the airport that I worked was at an insurance replacement branch. So you know how most times if you're renting a car out of town, you pop by a Hertz Enterprise, whatever, you go in. It's just a normal what used to be a bank usually, and it's like, hey, give me uh, whatever the hell, and they go here you go, and they take it. An insurance replacement branch is when you get in an accident and it's at a body shop and they need to drive their shitty car, have it towed there, and then they get a horrible replacement car from you. And none of these people know, for the most part, that their insurance doesn't pay for rental cars. You have to opt into that in a lot of situations. And so they'll show up furious, like not even the chance to put them in a good mood. So you're like sitting there in the middle of a warehouse, like, how's it going, Mr. Jefferson? And he's like, well, I totaled my new car. How's your day going? And it's like, well, I regret to inform you, your insurance will not be covering the rental. How do you prefer to pay? Hmm. It's like, oh, I'm not fucking paying. I'm not, you call my insurance. And then you, they yell at you. They scream at you. They call you incompetent. They say, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Shut the fuck up. You're a fucking loser. Like they're mean as shit once they're, in their zone of being pissed. One guy, it was in a bay, uh, was so, I guess, not paying attention that there's a car in the front of the bay talking to the insurance person. At the entrance to the bay is where the rental place is, where they get you set up. There was a car pulled up to the insurance thing. This, Thank God no one was standing in the way. This guy must have came in into the bay going 22 miles an hour, and he just slams into the back of this other car that's already there for repairs and there's just fucking glass and shit all over the place. And then he gets out and yells at the lady who had that car there as if she was wrong. And he's like, it, these people are degenerates. They are the fucking worst a lot of the time. And then other times you'll come across the sweetest people in the world. My first day on that job where I was working there, they tell me, Taylor, you don't know what the fuck you're doing, how to write contracts yet. Go pick up this lady. She's at this apartment complex. You don't know where it is. And so I had to look it up on my phone. I, I get over there and there's like, must have, I don't know what the hell was going on, but there were like a, a bunch of cars on the curb with people in it. And so I pull up my car there and I don't know where to go because it's an apartment complex where it's just like stairs come down. And I just, I get, I just wait. I didn't know what to do. I didn't ever number anything. I just wait. And then I'm playing on my phone and I'm startled because the door, my rear side passenger door opens and this woman just starts going, oh, thank God you're here. My goodness. I, I got to strap my kid in the back. Do you mind? I'll do that real quick. She starts strapping her kid in. I say I haven't said anything at this time. She gets the kid strapped in. And she goes, I don't I left my wallet in there. Give me one second. Closes the door. I didn't say anything. I haven't said anything so far. I'm now in the car alone with, I think, in a possession four to five of her year child, old, the four to five year old child alone. And like that is the worst parenting I've ever seen because <laughs> I was not the only guy sitting there. There were five or six people sitting on that curb in a car. I don't know why, but for all she knew, she walked up to a random car, buckled her kid in and left. Cause I gave no 
affirmative acknowledgement of it. It was my first time. I was a little nervous. And so that was, that was weird. Uh, yeah, that job fucking sucked. I got to think of, of funnier stories for it. Right now, I'm just kind of ranting about how what much I remember. It? I was I was desperate for money. I was just out of college. I didn't have hardly anything. Like I just I needed a fucking job, and they were the first one that called me back. Went in, interviewed, got it done, and I was like, that, "That's that's what I got to do now. I got to make money." Yeah, rental car companies hire a lot of people fresh out of college. Every major, and they all leave within two years. Yep. The turnover time in those companies is the worst because you get paid shit, and they work you. They tell you when you're getting the job, so you're prepared to work forty eight, fifty hours a week. You're like, yeah, that, that doesn't sound hard. I don't think I worked 50 hours a week in the entire like two years I was there. It was like always 60, 70, so much time. And they would, you've never felt like as much of a fucking goober as when you show up to your new job wearing nice clothes. And the first thing they tell you to do, nice ass new patent leather shoes. And the first thing they tell you to do is to go wash a car in a bay with an indented part that goes to a drain. And so day one, you've got soap that's ruined your shoes in the bottom of your pants. And you're sitting there in the heat of the summer, scrubbing a Honda Odyssey in the middle of a damp bay in a suit, like an asshole. I would quit. I would quit on day one. I didn't have enough money to quit. I, I had to work. Like I tell I'm like, I'm, I'm wearing a suit. <laughs> like, like, can I go get some, like some khakis and a polo or like, like, is there a uniform here? That was wasn't there a uniform like khakis and a polo? No, it was dress pants, khakis, and then a long sleeve white or light blue shirt and a tie. See, and this is tie. why I use Avis. Y'all, y'all are too stuck up over there. <laughs> You're preaching to the choir. <laughs> <laughs> I had to... don't use Avis. The best one is use National because National. You sign up for their Emerald Club, and then you don't have to talk to a single motherfucker at the airport. You I go like out, to talk. I negotiate. You scan it. You're not going to negotiate with one of these companies that well. I, I'm uh, gonna oh, oh, I always get a free upgrade. It's, oh, free upgrade. Those are, you know, what they what they do is they add. I'm a, a mid size to a full size SUV. You know what was the worst is when someone would come in and it'd be like, "I rented a an economy a Toyota Corolla." And to be like, ma'am, I've got such a treat for you. <laughs> a brand a new Camry. Ford F-250. <laughs> hold the phone, ma'am. Hold the phone. This is a free upgrade for you. A free upgrade. And do it. <laughs> and then and every time. And the reason I'm doing it is because that's the only car on the lot. And I'm yeah, trying. Of course. And then she'll be like, I don't, that's a little too much car, and I'm just driving to Provo to see my nephew and the gas mileage on that. And I'm like, <laughs> have you ever heard of Sirius XM? Because this comes with Sirius XM stuff. This woman is five foot nothing and elderly. <laughs> <laughs> trying to just grind her into a fucking <laughs> <laughs> it never You're exaggerating, not really a 250. It was a 150. It's still, yeah, and, okay. Yeah, I much. always try to like, like upgrade like an upgrade that makes sense, though, like like a V6 to a V8 or like a... What do you uh, say to get it? I tell oh. them what I want. I just, yeah. I just I just start a conversation with them. Like, like yeah, it's going to be kind of tight in that Explorer. Is it, can, can you just get me in an expedition? I saw some out there. If you want to get free upgrades like that, like if you're paying for something that's $20 a day and you want a car that's $55 a day, mm -hmm. just tell the person at the counter and go, hey... I want a free upgrade, but I'll also buy roadside assistance protection from you. So then you get a sale and it's all fine. And that's only an extra $4.99 a day. So basically you're getting a car for $35 that's more expensive. You pay $4.99. We're both happy and look good. And 100% of the time people are like, oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, let's do it. So many so, times I've got, you'll, you'll, so many times I've gotten free stuff or free upgrades just in life, just by asking. In, in car yeah. sales, we call it asking for the sale. You know, you, somebody be like, yeah, you didn't buy the car. Did you ever ask him to? What do you mean? Did you ever say, buy the car, sign here? No, I would never be so direct. It's like, Jesus, that's pussy, you have to ask like don't be a pussy. Like, like just, just ask, you know, yeah. the same the, the, with the, everything the, in life. It's always just like, like figure out what you want and go for it. Like, like somebody was like, how could you possibly get a girl to agree to a three way? It's like, ask, ask, 
<laughs> ask. Like, like, hey, I'd like to do this. What about you? No. How about for five hundred dollars? Yeah, huh? <laughs> oh well, I was. I knew you weren't that much of a stickler. Well, I, just just ask for the sale with everything. Ask for anything, like like whether you want a library card or an upgrade at the car rental place or whatever. Just ask. So if you if you want a nicer car, go to. Uh, so here's here's the trick that I I'll do if I want something nicer is you never walk up to a rental car counter and say, I'm a walk up. I don't have a reservation. What are your rates for this? Because you have total control of what to do. And there were times that our managers would tell us like, Hey, if they ask a Yukon's $400 a day, because we've only got one and we have to save it. And eventually, a you know, someone will come up and be willing to pay that. But if you want a cheaper thing and you know more people have it, go to a different rental car place, get a quote, then go to a second one, get a quote, and then go to the one that you originally wanted, ask for their uh, what their listed price is, first look online, and then tell them you'll pay $10 more for it per day. Because in their system, even though that's cheaper than the two previous places you found, those are just excuses in case they need to bring it up. But you just tell them, Hey, I know that's listed at 130. You guys just said you're charging 400 a day. How about I give you 140 a day? That way you get your nut, I get mine, and I'm not wasting an extra 260 a day. So always look up what the rate is online before you walk up to the counter because if they if it says 140 online and they say it's 400, you show them that and they have to honor it and well they don't have to. They can do whatever the fuck they want. But just tell them, always tell the salesman you'll pay an extra 5 or 10 a day for whatever they want and they will do it because they don't give a shit. They do not fucking care. So, yeah, just offer to buy something most of the time. Never pay the upgrade price. It's absurd. It makes sense. Absolutely absurd. Hmm. So, yeah, and that is all I've learned from that. I Totally <laughs> useless information piled in my head. Do you know how fast I could work that DOS prompt system? Tab F4, tab F4, pop, 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 pop. Just, just, it, was, it was horrible. It looked like swordfish hacking. Like, that's the <laughs> It was. it was literally that it was tap 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 f1 f1 what's your what's your driver's license number you have insurance f1 f4 you know all it, that the airplane people are the same way they're hitting yep. keys at a lightning pace yet for some reason it still takes 18 minutes to check me in and check my bags yeah. how much does your system suck it was so bad it was baffling bafflingly bad they're still using the same uh system that i left seven years whatever it was years ago and holy shit if it's dos it is, base is from like the 80s man it was a it was a an improved dos system from 1994 is what Jesus we were using christ yeah it was just black background and then like blinking green digits well come stuff. to think of it like the the car sales like um program i can't think of what it's called it's the same shit it's called the we call it the blue screen and it's yep. just it's a blue same black shit. it's a blue background and it's just Super, super simple. Just no interface capable. Like, there's no like scanning anything in. Everything is manual prompt, and it's just. It was pretty sophisticated when I um bought my last car at the Toyota place. Like, where I well, signed you went, was a. Uh, it was all you know the credit card where you sign, but you can't see what you're writing. It looked like that, but really high tech. It looked like an Apple version of that. Some clean interface, and he had a nice clean interface on his screen. Must have been in the last couple of years. Oh, that was the uh, that'd be the insurance guy if you're seeing that, he right? Was a, like, like, not insurance, but like um, finance a finance guy. Yeah, yeah, he was that. Yeah, guy. the guy up front. He, I think it was a four square. I called it a four square, and he looked at me like I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we had a game at the airport. So, like, my manager, very nice guy, but horrible at handling like conflict with customers. He was too nice. He wasn't good at putting his foot down ever, and would end up just giving him the you know, the farm if they asked for it. And so after a while, there was one time where people were asking for a manager in a hectic situation. And I was just like, yeah, that's me. Just, just lied. And then, and then handled it. Okay. And so from then on at the airport, like when there was a really horrible customer, they would call an audible called pretend manager. <laughs> and I was pretend manager. And so like I would get calls and I was doing fleet management stuff and it'd, it'd be like, Hey, what's up? And he'd be like, uh, fleet manager was like being outside, like organizing what cars go where it's like after you, you graduate from finishing the, the ticket writing, or at least it, it was at this branch. And he would call out to the, to the booth and be like, Hey Taylor, we got a really rowdy one here on, uh, on line two. Can you pretend manager for us? I'd be like, <laughs> and I love pretend manager. It, so, <laughs> it was so much fun to be pretend. I manager. like to think you did accents <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> Hello, 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't even know. Yeah, and it would just be shit like answering the phone. Uh, Taylor, manager of the airport. And they'd be like, I was just talking to someone and they are not refunding the $40 that you owe me. And then I would just like make up managerial protocols a lot of the time. <laughs> but I'd be like, we have something called the T2 form. You're going to want to dial him back. Make sure you get that. That's called a lost item form. Now you're going to transition that from me to the actual airport security. They know exactly where to file. A lot of this was just buying time for the manager to figure out what it was. So you're going to call them, ask about that. And then you bring us back and make sure you have your, and then just list off a couple, you know, your your insurance card number, your just stuff to slow them down, to, to, to make it so we can actually find what they lost or get what they need. Mm -hmm. And I would just send these people on goose chases. <laughs> <laughs> and just absolute goose chases to find all these things. And then usually by the time they got back, it'd be like, oh, it's all, you don't need any of that. It's all <laughs> sorted. <laughs> it's all. <laughs> and then other ones, uh, the, the most fun one of those, there was this like really effeminate short fat guy who he came in right into the front and he said, I reserved a Chevy Tahoe and I don't see a Chevy Tahoe. I just walked your lot. He was giving me that head shake and that kind of saying, I just walked your lot. I reserved a Chevy Tahoe and it is not there. Do I need to go to a competitor? Do I need to call my friend who is a lot higher up here in you at this company? Do I need to do that? Do I need to do it? And I remember doing pretend manager and I was like, sir, you're acting erratic. Have you been drinking? <laughs> 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 there are other people in line he's like the fact you would even ask that says more than enough I, i'm i'm definitely ringing him i'm ringing him i'm like sir as, as far as we are as a company you know i'm sure you know a lot of people who are high up here and i respect that you've just come in here in a way that i no longer feel secure running our property to you. <laughs> if you'd like i could call you a cab and get you where you need to be it's just our property and yourself sir for your own safety i don't know if we feel it's the best idea that we give you a vehicle at this time and like keep it way tamped down so that the comparison between mm -hmm. us is stream that anyone around is observing that I am the one who's right. And so, oh man, if I could go back there for Such a, a day, piece of shit. Oh, I hate you. <laughs> all I would do is be end manager. I just came here to get my Tahoe and it's not here. Sir, are you doing, are you on any drugs right now? Because <laughs> you're acting very erratically. And is that a blade you have? Is it a blade? He's got an IV. He's got a screaming in there. I don't know about it, but I feel like he was I smell off. alcohol and pot on him. I think I smell. Is that plastic explosive? Do you have? Do you Prove have I don't smell it. Explosives. Let me tell you why, though. He was freaking out about the Tahoe because I told him you only reserved a class of car. You didn't reserve a Tahoe. We're giving you a suburban or whatever the the equivalent. Wow. Is. And he would not take it. He refused. He thought I was lying about going out there. And so he went and walked the lot, which took him way fucking idiot, way too long to walk the entire fucking airport lot and then come back and get mad. And so it was definitely his fucking fault. He could have just taken the Suburban and left instead of screaming at me in front of. In, uh, you should have happened. leaned in close and whispered that to him. You could be leaving with a Suburban. Instead of going to <laughs> right. humiliate you in front of all of these people. Yeah. And I still remember the person who came and what ended up happening in the end, it was all fine. He ended up calming down and then actual manager who I said was the branch, the higher <laughs> manager. He, he came, this is Mr. Hertz himself. And then, and then, hey, suddenly when you tell someone you're not getting a car, suddenly the Suburban seems like a great idea, doesn't it? And he was more than happy to take that Suburban by the time it was done. And literally the next lady in line, or it was maybe a couple after, because there were dozens of people in line as we're having this bout of frustration, were like telling me, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> we're such fucking sheep. Yeah, it, don't be sorry. I was actually fucking with him. That that went perfectly from my perspective. Oh, I I didn't smell anything. I, to be honest, I have a sub, I have a suburban, a Tahoe. I got all kind of shit back there. I just I just have a little fun. The secret is I did smell whiskey, but that was me. Yes. I mean, I've been I'm drunk as shit, and I'm high. <laughs> Wait, I, I smell my own burp, I think. Yes. <laughs> Just to be honest, I, I crashed the Tahoe last night, and <laughs> that's why it's not available. I'm, I'm going to the funny ones, but for every one of the funny pretend managers, genuinely, there were 20 times that I handled an actual problem <laughs> way fucking better than my managers just because I wouldn't get all sheepish or I wouldn't get all like flustered and yell like a couple of them would. So, What's wrong with yeah, sheepish though? Like, 
I, I know when I had people do customer support at Woodycraft, it, I had to get people off of that job or even fire a couple because they try to win at customer service. And it's like, no, winning at customer service is when the customer walks away happy. That's how this is done. Yes. You know, if you battle this guy in some sort of argument and you clearly come out on top, great. That doesn't help Woodycraft at all. That sucks. Yeah. See, the thing was like, at least in this business, it was like, if you're too sheepish, like some sales or managers people were, like you would get bullied into renting a car like a Tahoe for $19 a day. And then it's like, we're hemorrhaging money on this. Like people are getting mad. And so that's like the level of sheepish I'm talking about is managers letting themselves get absolutely stomped on. When but who cares about the bottom line? I don't care. I just don't want to get yelled at by the, the area manager who would come. This, this fucking weirdo who worked there, the area manager, I remember he was so strict. You had to shave every day. And you oh, I remember work. that. Yeah, yeah. And I remember there was one, me and my buddy, we worked at the insurance replacement branch at this point, and it was the, the redheaded stepchild of the entire area. He never came to our branch because it was a shithole. There weren't enough chairs for all the employees. We had to stand most of the time. We got so bored in the I middle of that warehouse. Chair. I'm saying we got so bored in the middle of this warehouse, you know, those bays that I ordered off Amazon, a cheap hockey net and some sticks. And we would just play hockey in there sometimes when it was slow. But this guy, me and my buddy, Sean, who worked there, both of us were low little underlings. And we had we had made it three weeks without shaving. It was a game for us to like play, you know, chicken and see how long we could go and so like i'm for weeks now no fucking tie sleep <laughs> beard don't fucking care and then there was one time where i was <laughs> i wasn't paying attention and i was just sitting like doing something on the computer and then the area manager comes in he goes well hey taylor and i was like <laughs> hello full <laughs> beard sleeves up shirts dirty no tie i'm not taylor I'm, this is a disguise <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing and i was like i was doing callbacks for overdue cars and he's like yeah yeah are you and i was like yeah he's like I haven't shaved in a while have you and this guy was such a passive aggressive fuck he would never actually call you out he would just make little office space like Right. We're going to need you to shave that by Monday. If you could do that, that'd be great. And so then I figured this bitch is never going to get onto me for anything. And so I could just do whatever I want as far as not shaving and rolling up my sleeves and not wearing a tie. And so that's what I did. So it all, it all panned out. Other than that, I was a great employee. That's a long list of that's. Yeah. (laughs) You've been going, you've been going for 35 minutes. (laughs) This was a deposition. <laughs> hey, pretend manager was a good bit, and I'm never backing down from pretend manager. <laughs> and it was mostly helpful. It was mostly helpful. I think helpful for you passing the time, but as far as... Ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When you worked so, your 60 hour plus a week, how many hours did you work? Uh, I never really counted like the driving time as working that much because that was so easy. But other than that, like you're, you're fucking standing typing tickets and doing back the entire time you're doing shit. And then like managers pass stuff off. And so they'll be like, Hey, we got a, and then sometimes, Oh, it was fun when you got to do this. They'd be like, all right, we got a red minivan. I I had to do this a couple of times. There was this dirt poor trailer park in rural Idaho. And they were like, all right, well, we, this, it's been four weeks since we've seen this, uh, this Chevy. Who wants to go out and take a look? Who wants to go drive to the trailer park and ask around, see if they know where it is? And I would always be like, yes, yes, this is so cool. I want to do that. And so I'd drive around in a trailer park. And like, if anyone was standing, I'd be like, hey, have you seen a, a red, really new looking van recently? And like, it was like sleuthing. I never actually found any, but it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't expect it to be such hard work. I, my impression was that planes roll in. You sprint for 15 minutes and then wait an hour. But I I guess not. It was like they would have you show short staff to be like, all right, planes coming in. You're going to be busy for 40 minutes writing those. And then as soon as you're done, you bust your ass down to the wash bay and you start washing cars. And so I've I've washed even wearing your suit. I've washed I washed thousands of cars. I didn't know the people at the registers wash cars when I wasn't there. Such bullshit. Forced to wash the cars because the, the car preps down there don't give a shit. 
they don't they never see the customer and so like they'll do a half ass job and then they like, weren't you'll caring have... like you were i didn't want to get yelled at by the customers and stuff and i did i to be fair every branch i worked at their like score of customer satisfaction the time i joined to the time i ended went up significantly so i did fucking help and i did work hard at those jobs i really did because i would have you you've been in a situation where you feel like enough people aren't busting their ass that it motivates you to bust ass where it's like, what am I wife? One of these people, like one of these lazy fuckers. No, no, I'm at work. I'm going to fucking work. And so, but those days would come and go. Some days you get berated by enough people at 11 AM. You're like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go lose myself at the Mexican bistro upstairs for a while and hope nobody asks for me. It takes me 35 minutes to poop. Uh, nothing I can do about it. I'll be back. Oh, I I'm going to go. Some- yeah, I would, I'd just go out in the parking lot and fall asleep in a Suburban for, for an hour or so. There was a guy that got did fired that because he, he did it wow. every day for like a month. <laughs> I did it a lot. I did a lot. You know, I, I, I had a hard time getting my sleep in at night. Uh, we were always partying. We'd be up until 3 a.m. and then have to be at the, at, at the work at like 9 or I don't know, maybe 8.30. So around 11 a.m., I just go out in the lot and find something comfy to get in and yeah. take a little nap. Take a little nap. Yeah, I mean, you you couldn't get away with doing nothing because they would keep like a tally of how many tickets or contracts you'd written that month. But I even convinced my manager at one point. He's like, Taylor, your sales are terrible. Are you even asking to sell insurance anymore? And I told him this is the one who asked me to do pretend manager all the time. I was like, no, I'm not asking anymore. And he's like, you have to at least ask, man. And I was like, let me put it to you this way. Our customer satisfaction has skyrocketed. Why? Because we're moving so much faster out of here. So you got four people working tickets trying to sell, and they're writing 200 to 400 tickets a month. Then you got me banging them the fuck out over here. You got insurance, hell yeah. And I've got the line moving. I'm writing 1,000 a month, just tearing through this shit. And so I didn't think he would buy that, but he did. So I didn't have to try selling anymore after that. But I, you know, I helped with customer satisfaction. So... Don't work at a rental car place unless you're just out of college or you luck out because it sucks. It's no fun. Yeah, you're better off stealing. Just steal That's, the rental cars. Just wait for a good loot, right? They seem to happen. Ferguson was what, 2008? 14. Okay, 2014. <laughs> was that it? It wasn't like closer to the election? Maybe I'm crazy. So you know, every five, six years, free shit. You just go get it. You just get it. So... Yeah, I got a lot and of more stories. That's enough for now. <laughs> that's the message of this PKA. Take what you want. I, yeah. Yes. Take what you want. <laughs> exactly. Please Stuff bro, we have just going. That there. looks awful. That looks so bad. Look at the yeah, Apparently, they fuck, on, they they fuck there, people's cars up. Are there any interior shots that, that show cool features? Is there a PlayStation One in the back? There's got to be a PlayStation. They miss. Look, look, hang on. Look, look how they spelled celebrity. Where? Where does he say it? It has it, the car has thousands of dollars in electronics. Oh my word! A, a, a beautiful pink <laughs> style and a celebrity history. <laughs> oh, I like this. It, it says, uh, "1999 Dodge Grand Caravan was on the TV show Pimp My Ride. You can view episode on, on internet. internet. Just search <laughs> Plymouth Grand Voyager on Pimp My Ride. <laughs> what do you know? Dude, I like Thanks this for the help with Google." Thanks for telling me how to search things <laughs> online, you fucking dumbass. 120,000 miles on this piece of shit. That thing is disgusting. I would, I, I would, if I, I were still making videos, I would do whatever it took to buy this and blow it up. Like, like Whatever that, it took is $850. I would probably complete <laughs> yeah, my childhood. I, FPS Russia blows up a Pimp My Ride car. Yeah, but I, I got to get all the way to... Where is it again? Where, I don't Ma- even know. What's what, MA? Massachusetts? That's what I, I was know. thinking, too. Like, what the fuck is MA? There's too many M states. It's Massachusetts. Yeah. Is it it's Massachusetts? Massachusetts. Yeah. Kyle, you I will know, go but... get that if you will do the honor of blowing it up for yeah, me. Yeah. I can do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's yeah. got a speaker in the back by the aquarium. Well, it does. Blow it up it. You do the Dude, if, 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 someone, if someone, for, <laughs> if someone for free put that in my trunk, I would be livid. Yeah, <laughs> you would beat the shit out of them. You get like, there's that out right you, now. There is no more space in your trunk. This car is useless now. This car is completely useless for anything other than we the driver to get somewhere. We turned your family vehicle into a boombox. <laughs> ice, ice baby. Hey, we know you love your deaf son, which is why we made it louder than ever. <laughs> he can really feel the beat. <laughs> oh, no.
We put a visual on the PlayStation screen so we can see the music. Bro, yeah. for eight hundred fifty dollars, that car's worth the the. Post. Oh, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I bet it smells though. Oh, I can smell no. that car just looking at it. It smells <laughs> like cigarettes it? and shame. Yeah, uh, do you, th- do you think they smoked menthol. in it? Definitely smoked in there. Menthol, menthol for yes. sure. It smells like menthol. Newports. Newports. They, 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 they smoked, smoked Newports. In it. <laughs> I think they smoked. In I smoked it. Newports for over ten years. I can tell a Newport car when I see one. Yeah. Dude, when I when I when I worked at Enterprise and I was like returning cars at the airport, every once in a while, like someone would step out of the car and like number one, be like visibly drunk, and, oh, yeah. <laughs> and you're just like, "What? Well, we're here. Whatever. You just go get on your plane." And then you'd like find cigarette butts all over the back seat, and like oh if you if you're a smoker, like Kyle used to be, like. You know, someone smoking as they're driving, when they go to ash, it blows the ash mm-hmm. into the floor of the if back not seat behind them. And so, like, you can just check and be like, oh, there's ash here. You clearly smoked cigarette. This person had, like, whole, it was a, uh, what's the what's that car where the, the hamsters are in it? The, um, uh, the Juke? Is it, the, it's not the Juke, it's the It's Q. not the Juke. It's the, the Kia. Kia, uh, Kia Soul. I think yes, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. It was a yes. Kia Soul, yeah. ugly ass car, and there were like dozens of cigarette holes all throughout it. Oh my god! Like dozens, like yeah, piles of cigarettes, and these people would just have... bold face be like, "I wasn't smoking in the car," and it's like, <laughs> hey, "You got out of the car. You're smoking right now. Yeah. I'm watching yeah. you get out of the car. You click the butt have... getting out. You redneck." <laughs> uh, I uh, I've smoked in a rental car before, and you know, I just rolled the window down, and then didn't smoke the day i returned it it was fine if you don't run the air you don't run the air conditioner either you turn the air off window down and like that ash thing like like that that's just an asshole if he's somehow ending up with butts in the back seat mm. yeah it was just something like, yeah that's crazy it's, it's remarkable like you know when you rent a car you like do something with someone else's property even if it's like a corporation's prop, you're kind of like, okay, this isn't mine i should treat it like at bare There's minimum like I, no, i'm gonna, right, well, I'm, gonna whip it, I'm gonna whip it around when I when I worked at there, it was different when I worked there because I felt like I was like one of the I, team. I should be. I'm on the team. I'm able to do it. I there there was this one time I was uh th- they had like at the airport they had like overflow lots and so like you'd have let's say we had 600 cars or whatever and all the lots were full they would have like off base off of the airport you drive like two miles and there'd be some rented lot with gravel and everything and we were quickly like it was one of those days where there were way more returns than we had people shipping out and so it was just a constant like which was like the best day for me it was just like taylor we need more people to drive cars and it's like oh i get to listen to opie and anthony driving around this is awesome because they all have three (laughs) xm and so i just go you drive these and we fill up this this lot and it got to the point where the overflow lot was full and i was in a hyundai uh elantra or uh whatever the smallest one is even smaller than the The elantra the accent, the, the Hyundai accent. The wind Terrible. will like blow that car. The wind. Those, is, those things never are felt fucking... a, toy, a toy car in my life like that car. Awful. They are terrible. And I and there was like a tiny bit of space left in the overflow lot. And one of the assistant managers, cool guy, was like, uh, all right, I guess we're kind of done. And I was like, I bet I can fit this Hyundai accent in that spot. And he was like, give it a go if you want. All right. And so I like pulled and I was backing up to like squeeze it in like I, w- I had to like open the door and like suck in like my ribs to like squeeze out because it was so so tight in there but i was like backing up and i see there's a sign that they would usually have in front of the lot to say parking and it looks like a paper sign like a cardboard sign that's just standing behind me and i'm like all right i'm perfect i'm not gonna hit the car to my left the only thing i'm gonna nudge a little bit is that stupid cardboard sign to my right like Uh-oh. that wood sign it's not gonna matter I start going back immediately after hitting it. I realized it's made of a steel plate and <laughs> nice. And it tore a hole in the Gouge. back quarter panel mm. of this Hyundai accent. Oh my and, God. And, you know, I was like, fuck, like nobody, like, they were all in the van, the shuttling van. Uh, and they were waiting on me to do this. Very obvious that I scraped it. Cause it was going. <laughs> and it was loud and then i got out and i was I, I go around to the side and i'm like and it's it's bad it's it's brutally bad like that you can't rent this car out like the, the little thing is popped out from its moorings and it's like hanging holy and shit i i walk back and i talk to my assistant manager one of the cool guys i was like hey hypothetically i really just fucked up that hyundai accent on the sign what do we do and he was like that's a shame i can't believe these vandals 
coming around here. <laughs> Hell yeah. and, uh, and I was like, I was like, thank you, thank you, thank you so so much By for, way, for, not, for not telling anyone. By the way, yeah. Taylor, and then like most, like a couple days vandals. later, like they bring that out. And they're like, anybody know what happened? We checked the, the, the vehicle history on this accent. There's no accident reports. Like, oh, Bob, who knows? Could have been ghosts. <laughs> and now that you've said it on a podcast, prepare to get sued. How long has it been? <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> America. Has the statute of limitations passed? You go Hopefully. Now? No, and it wouldn't matter anyway. I made that whole story up. None of it's true. Not of every, not. every word of that <laughs> isn't, isn't true. <laughs> None of that's true. It's like that Frank Reynolds. There was no suit. There's no car. There's no suit. There are no lies. <laughs> there's, no, there's no car. There's no at least you had a thug ass boss to let you get away with it. Yeah. Oh, was, oh, was I was gonna nice. say that. Um, you reminded me of what I was thinking. Th- that boss I had that used to be a bit of a drug dealer. Um, <laughs> he. Uh, I remember he was he was 28 years old, running this gigantic car dealership. I remember one day I had like pried open the soda machine and I was robbing it of all the sodas. Oh my god! And uh, like like the one that was like in the the car dealership. What and a he... piece of shit! You <laughs> are. Oh my god, bro! Holy shit! So Catch you I was, so I was prying open the soda machine. I'm here with this crowbar, fucking this At soda machine sideways. You, you fucking At my place, place I work. <laughs> Hang on, let me start over. Let me start over. <laughs> <laughs> There was this other guy, this piece of shit. He was robbing a soda machine in my box. <laughs> <laughs> I looked I was at him and I was like, oh my God. This asshole. Um, no, so like the, the soda man like didn't, I don't know how that fucking locking mechanism works. You know, so you've seen him twist the thing and un- yeah. unscrew. He didn't screw it all the way in. So I was able to like get my way in there and that I'm robbing the machine. And uh, you know, it's right there in the showroom. It's not like I'm like hiding this anyway. I'm just like, I've got an arm full of sodas and I'm getting more. And uh, my boss walks out of the bathroom. He goes, What you doing, Kyle? And I'm like, I'm robbing the soda machine. <laughs> Not even for the money. <laughs> and he's like, soda. He goes, That dumbass left it unlocked. I'm like, Mostly I did the rest. He's like, <laughs> He starts getting a dude. Look at him out, dude. Fuck it. Man, me and this 28-year-old millionaire robbed the fucking Pepsi machine. <laughs> and, and I know for a fact he took like eight drinks out to his car and put them in it before he came Stash back. Right <laughs> and I just imagined like like him like wiping his prints off the Pepsi machine before he leaves. Like, like He's like calling. He's like, honey, I've got great news. <laughs> that, I got eight Pepsi Maxes. Definitely hey, baby, I hope you like Sierra Mist. I'm on the way home right now. <laughs> Hey, I got five sugar-free Sierra Mist with your name on it, baby. Yeah, yeah. no. Hey, hey, it's like Woody in Mexico right now. It's not always about, like, the money. It's about the thrill. He just wanted to yeah. feel the thrill of doing something mm. wrong. No, like, I stealing soda. from his own soda machine. I was 19 years old. I wanted those sodas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, I would imagine that the boss, I don't think the boss would have been taking a loss from that, huh? It's typically a third party. Oh, it has that's, nothing to do with him. Like, Yeah, he, he, it's, it's not his loss at all. It's, it's going to be that guy that's get, that gets blamed, right? Well, don't say that it's a corporate store <laughs> don't, put some, don't, don't, make, don't make it seem like we no, fucked no. over a little man or something like that i'm sure no, someone no, else no, made it right you know no we didn't yeah let's just from hope a, from a from a private entrepreneurial was it a was it have. a good soda machine like were you getting sprite coke dr pepper or was it like or was it or a mist Mr. yellow Bell. mellow you and pib i remember i remember uh that it was pepsi that's all i remember that it was a pepsi machine Rip. So I, I don't remember what was in That's there. That's not that bad. I like Diet we had a Red Bull. Than Diet Coke. I don't like Pepsi. We had a nice showroom. We had like a really nice uh, espresso machine and um, like a Red Bull machine and, uh, you know, the Pepsi machines and like really nice snack machines that had like cool shit in them. They wanted people to stay in the, the showroom. I rented a car from Toro and I was pretty happy with it. I liked the experience. Like there's no rental counter where the lines can be so long. The car was right there. I returned it. I returned it dirty, but not like scummy or anything. The inside was completely clean. It was fine. But the uh, the tires had run through like puddles and had like that sort of streaks of dirt next to the, you know, behind the tires, like on the side of the doors and stuff. And he charged a good amount, like $40 cleaning fee or something. Really? Like a detailing fee? That's yeah, surprising. I, I could have just run it through like a gas station car wash probably and yeah. avoided it. But, uh, you know, like I, 
Well, what? Turo rents the nice cars. So that might be different. I remember yeah. I worked at a rental car place, and they'd be like, yeah, get it as dirty as you want. And I'd be like, you fucking asshole manager. You're not going to have to clean that. I'll probably have to. <laughs> and people, some piece of shit people would take that literally, and like there would be folded up baby diapers in the back seat, uh... like all sorts of trash in there. I remember I returned a car for this one guy. He was in a Nissan Cube, and there were so many holes all over the car that he had just he apparently never got through a cigarette he <laughs> would just drop it on his seat and let it burn <laughs> that's how he extinguished them <laughs> i can i i might on my phone still have these photos from like 2013 or 20 whatever it was where i returned it and it was so outrageous i was taking photos and it was like just half a dozen holes just burned all over the seats and i like return i'm like dude we got to charge you for a detail because you clearly smoked in the car and like as he's lighting i was like no i didn't <laughs> <laughs> and all you have to do like you just open up the well first of all i was like well there's i know there weren't this many cigarette burned seats when you took it out because they wouldn't have rented it to you if there were a bunch of cigarette burned seats and then also like if someone has smoked a little bit in the car you can check the door behind the driver's seat and you'll see ash there in that yeah. lower area there was, it looked like a cremated body. <laughs> it's absurd. I mean, this guy was spitefully smoking in the car. <laughs> he got two of these double fists in him. It, it was awful. Th those were the worst fucking things. Because you don't want to have a conflict with someone like the airport. Yeah, yeah, no, not at all. I remember um, returning a car once, and I was uh, I was in Texas. And it was one of those instances where I hadn't timed my drive perfectly to correspond with my, my flight. And, uh, cause you know, I'm in another state and I, it, it was like a three hour drive to the airport, maybe more. It was more, it was three or four hours. And I, I was just running out of time and I had already stopped for gas once, but I, it wasn't full. And I'm like 10 miles from the airport and I'm like, it's almost full. <laughs> it's almost full like like they'll yeah. probably just you know a couple gallons how much could it cost <laughs> uh, at seven dollars a gallon a lot oh so yeah. i would have loved it if they'd only charged me seven dollars a gallon taylor <laughs> what company were you using i have no idea maybe enterprise it was a lot though i remember it being like it actually probably ended up being like five gallons, and I think it was like eighty dollars. See, that's Jeez. the thing. It was something ridiculous. You're supposed to return it full, but we all know if you return it like two gallons, not full, that's full, right? The thing, the, yeah. the little gauge is still touching the the F, and like you're cool, everything's fine. Yeah, but if they have to fill it, then they fill it to where you didn't, you know, where you never would have. Yeah, dude, uh, returning people's cars who were like, oh, I. I'm sorry, we didn't have time to fill up the last quarter tank. How much is that going to run us? I remember on the little handheld thing, like scanning it and punching it in and being like, that's going to be $50. But that man, and in my last like few months there, when I was like, fucking, I don't care. I would be like, that is outrageous close enough. And I would just delete all the fuel charges because it would honestly be someone would show up with three quarters of a tank and they'd want you to charge like an extra, like I said, like $60. Or something that's like gonna cause an issue. And when there's a hundred people behind them waiting to be checked in, I would just at that point in my little car rental career, I was like, I don't fucking care. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You you're not paying for gas. 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 <laughs> We're getting this done. We're getting it out of here, folks. And it was oh, that was you just needed to find me on my last bit there because you could have drove it. I remember we were supposed to do this thing with like, and so every time you uh, return a car, you have to do this one minute evaluation of the <laughs> car. Make sure everything's okay. And uh, you know, it's, it's real good to do. I not once did I ever do that. I would <laughs> walk around and just kind of give it the, eh. <laughs> like, yeah. it looks fine. And I remember one time it wasn't even me. It was this other guy who was, I think he was like baked as shit at work. He returned a car and didn't charge someone for an entirely shattered windshield to the point that like there was a hole in it. <laughs> like you can't even fix that. And so this guy invented this huge lie that when he was driving through the return, the, the cleaning bay, that a, a mechanical part fell off and hit it. And like <laughs> made up this lie 
and immediately like all the assistant managers at the branch are like that that didn't happen (laughs) if you buy the insurance can you do anything like so i I watched um you can't intentionally harm the car who's the guy with the really deep voice who has been on our show a couple times like car salesman um wiki yeah, yeah, Vin Wiki. So it, it, it might have been him or his friend Rabbit or something. They were talking about they bought the car insurance, insurance, and they were like off-roading Ford Mustangs to where like yeah. the tie rod got ripped off the bottom or something insane like that. And uh, they bought the insurance, and they're like, "Yeah, well, that was a good call, good, good, no problem." So if you admit to having off-roaded, that would void it. Mm. But I doubt they admitted to off-roading when they returned it. So. They could have said they just hit a dust storm. Or, you know, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you, you you can't off-road it. Uh, that's the big thing I remember is not off-roading, and you can't let somebody who's not on the contract drive. Because if, if you like, rent, someone what if else you rent is on like the contract, a... and you're driving, and you're a retard, and you're like, yeah, well, it was Susan driving, even though it's Brad with the contract. Then the rental car company can be like, well, you're on the hook for a hundred percent of it. What if you rent like a Jeep Wrangler? You can't take it off-road. No, no, really? you can't take anything off road unless you specifically rent it for that. But it's yeah. trail okay. graded. It's there's a sticker yeah. on the side. It says trail graded. It is, but it's a liability thing from the company standpoint. Mm, like they, being it's in. The, yeah, I, I know you. Are. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, we're prime off roading vehicle. No off roading. <laughs> <laughs> oh I, well, Woody, I didn't realize there was a sticker. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the corporate policy was wrong. I am so glad to not be doing that anymore. Oh so my God. what? Yeah. When you didn't care about the job, did you have another one or you just didn't care about work? It got to the point that like, like I was, I was really good at a few things. I was really good at fleet management. So like if they put me in charge of that, I was really good at predicting like what the workload would be like for that day. And so it'd be like early in the morning, like, all right, pull X amount from here. Now that not that many aren't going to show up. That's a waste of money. Don't send that many drivers like that kind of shit. Like I, I was pretty good at I was good at the customer service thing too. I've told you guys about pretend manager where I would <laughs> pretend manager for difficult situations. And I just got a kick out of it. It was so much fun. But uh, yeah, as far as sales was concerned by the end, I was like writing, cause it would have a little chart in the back where it's like everybody's name. And it'd be like number of tickets written. Like a ticket is just someone you're writing out for a thing. I was leading the pack and tickets every month trailing tremendously in every aspect of sales because they would like give you this like 12 point thing to ask people that was outrageous. And it got to the point where it was like, this, this line is taking forever. People are hating us. I would just be like, you got insurance. Yeah. Boom. You're good, hon. Did you get paid for it? No, you don't get, you don't get. See, so I used to work customer that. service and there were four bonuses we got. And those bonuses did so much to drive the way that we did. I was on the phone, like, you know, solving software problems. And uh, we got a bonus for like, like if you solved two thirds of the calls the first time they called, there was a bonus for that. So you knew that you knew that. And maybe the call is going on like seven minutes and this might be a situation where you're getting borderline on like, Hey, I'll call you. Let me research this and call you back. Or, Mm -hmm. you know, let me look at this. Like, hang on a second. Maybe I can find this answer in a few minutes and answer it right now for you. That second one became way more attractive because there's a bonus on the line. What happened is the managers at this call place figured out that what you bonus for is the behavior that you get. So like, that's one example. You bonus for solving calls on the first try. People start solving calls on the first try. You bonus for, there was like an interaction with the knowledge base, right? Mm -hmm. So if I got a call that came in, I had to either use the knowledge base and link that call to it, or I had to enhance the knowledge base so that the next guy that comes along will have this answer for him. And they bonus how often you, you know, improve the knowledge base or use it. People use it every fucking call because there was money in it for us. So if you were paid for insurance sales, you would have sold. I'm I'm sure of it. Oh, I'm sure. Like the, the little benefits they would give you were so outrageous as far as money that my manager at the airport started like, like outrageous is in like you would have to sell oh so much to get a pittance nothing like an impossible amount to get an impossibly small bonus That's dumb. like if it, they it, gave it, you a third like, of the insurance they'd make more money oh they would make fucking bank if they did that 
but like they make pretty much every rental car company makes the bulk of their money in those insurance packages. And so I remember there would be times where like, I wouldn't sell for three days in a row. Where my mm-hmm. manager would be like, he just liked me for some reason. And he'd be like, Hey Taylor, you haven't sold anything in like two and a half days. And I was like, yeah, I mean, but look at how many tickets I've written. How good is our customer service because of how much I'm pumping people out of here. <laughs> and he'd be like, all right, well, and then he would set things like, First person to sell 10 of the collision protection insurance goes home the second that they've put the last one. And he was like a didn't really fucking care manager. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'll just punch you out whenever. And so the second he would give those challenges, I would go sales mode Mm -hmm. and always get out of work. Like it would be like (laughs) I was on a six. I remember one time I was on a six to six shift and he gave that challenge at 8 a.m. At 830, I left. (laughs) <laughs> just so 30 just minutes like, and, and the way you i would give people into that is i would be like all right collision protection that's the only thing that you need these other three insurances ridiculous you, it, it's supplemental to everything you already have this one you're only here for a day 20 bucks for the day you're a, like that kind of shit like hmm. that was easy as pie if it was someone who showed up for like 10 days i'd be like all right let me just get you done really quick because there's no reason for you to spend 210 dollars insuring something you already have insured get the hell out of here and so i would just write like find like 10 people with one day rentals and be like this is what you need they'd be like all right whatever 20 bucks and then zoot the fuck out of there that was my main incentive was get out of the boise airport this sucks (laughs) so when you find yourself leading people or or people on the call like you you get the behavior that you pay for and Mm -hmm. yeah and i didn't even mislead people about it like there was there was this i've talked about this one cunt who I worked with that would just throw contracts onto forest uh, forest registry people. And so I'd be like, all right, we're renting a Yukon for three months. And she would just throw literally $30,000 of insurance, knowing that the firemen don't give a shit. They're going to sign for whatever. And so then she would get off for forever and get a bonus. And by the time they returned it and I had to delete all of it, like nothing happened. She fucking sucked. I hope life's going poorly. <laughs> I, I hope she's she, itchy she, right she, now so many she's probably men. she's probably living in a van moderating the r slash ask women yeah, she's, <laughs> she's living in a van moderating ask women that would be the ultimate justice mm-hmm. oh like yeah don't believe anything versus. those rental people tell you they're all told to be, be sneaky when i worked at the car rental place i would go take by the time i was like almost done there and like my tenure was up and i just truly genuinely didn't fucking care i would like go take almost an hour long bathroom break sometimes just go sit in there until like a manager would text me like hey what's up and then i would come in because i was an airport location and i would just by that point just lie and be like i was outside doing fleet stuff or if they i I was coming outside from inside oh i was inside helping organize something blah 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 blah. so you're just sitting on a toilet that by like the last couple weeks there i was I was so exhausted with Did it. Did you bother You're taking not your pants off or are you like just, just sitting on a toilet? Oh, there was. Well, I wasn't really on the toilet the whole time. I would go there and be like, I kind of 10% of me has to shit and then go take a shit. And then I would go actually up by this Mexican restaurant on the upstairs, but not past the security. And I would sit there and sometimes have chips. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the- how? Hey, how hard was that job, first of all, that you were hiding from? We were just in Wichita, Kansas, renting a car, and I feel like there were five people dealing with the car rental process it, it, over the course of the entire day. Why was this so stressful for you? It was like there were either because like everybody's staffing, it didn't know what the fuck they were doing either. So there were either so many people, there was no purpose there, or there were so few that there may as well, it may as well be closed. We can't even run it. Like we can't even do it, but yeah, you can only, and this was like in the last couple of weeks, I obviously didn't do this most of the time I worked there, but after like, I don't know the 10th time I'm there at 1am and, and 70 people come in from Seattle on a late yeah. flight. And I have to explain yeah. to all of them and call them cabs and say, you don't have a yeah. car. Sorry. And like, yeah. oh, you, you, I made a reservation. You know what that means? Hey, Hertz guy, yeah. can you please help me out? Like, I was yeah. just like, this fucking sucks. Are you, yeah. are you selling the insurance Taylor? Uh, no, I don't get any commission and it's a scam. <laughs> like you, you, yeah. you, you openly ask me to lie to people. Like that was one of the things. Not, not openly asked to lie. That is sales in a lot of ways. They'd be like, always be sure to be like. And does your credit card cover that? And then, or no, no, they would tell you to say because people would go, my credit card covers that, which is very standard, very true. Lots of credit cards offer rental mm-hmm. card coverage, and it's fine. 
and they would like tell us to just like throw darts of doubt. Like I was hearing from some other guy once, thought he was covered. Now <laughs> living in a double wide by the river, <laughs> he owes us a whole Yukon act. Like they would like try and try and amp it up. But, oh, that that job fucking sucked. But that Mexican yeah. place also sucked. The, wouldn't they, they make you wash cars sometimes in your suit? I the first fucking day I showed up to that job, I like was wearing really nice shit, and it was at an insurance replacement branch where everybody who comes in just got in a car accident and is so mad at you because you're telling them that like their insurance doesn't cover it. And they're like, That's, I just my car's totaled, and you're telling like it was everybody's in a bad mood. And my boss first day was like, Hey Taylor, you don't know all the software yet. Go wash cars, and I just ruined my shoes standing in tepid old filth water, spraying down at the time like a 2011 whatever the fuck car. Then you whip it back around, and oh here's here's your car, sir. You have to go and they'll be like hey go pick up this motherfucker way out there that was the best part of the job just getting in the car and listening to open anthony and just driving purposefully like taking longer than necessary yep. to get there and then just whipping it back because those were some uncomfortable conversations what it doesn't oh, depress you job. doesn't it depress you when you see people that are they have gray hair and should be around retirement age working those shitty jobs that you used to have oh, restaurant dude. jobs car rental we just went into a party city in kansas and unfortunately, <laughs> the guy uh, was at the receiving end of one of our bits and we fucked with him a lot. But this guy was probably 65 years old, just a regular clerk at a party city. Uh, Suicide. I, I would have killed myself 30 years ago if I were him. I, I, yeah, that that is sad. Like, <laughs> I would definitely remember because it'd be like a shift. And every once in a while, it'd be like it's like a bunch of people in the early 20s and then one 47 year old, 48 year old guy. And it's like, yeah. oh, my God, dude, like. This sucks. Like <laughs> yeah. you're at the same place I am right now. Like that is that's a rough one, man. And you had hope too the whole time. You, I'm sure, wanted to do something else with your life. A lot of these guys have nothing to look for. Anything to. else? Yeah. Yeah, that was terrible. I, yeah, I, I couldn't imagine being a cur- a career server like the guys I used to work with who had no hopes of advancement, and they would just drink every night to drown their pain. Why is there no yeah, hope? Servers are right? almost always alcoholics in my experience. I had a couple of roommates and. Uh, when I was like 20 and one of them worked at uh, this place in Atlanta called the goldfish, which is kind of a nice restaurant. It was a bar back mm-hmm. and he had a severe drinking problem. Like, like I remember one day he like listed what he'd had to drink that day. And it was like, it was a plethora of alcohol, all sorts of things <laughs> he had had. He's like in his fucking broken Lithuanian accent. He's like, well, I had two bottles of wine and 18 beers. And then I had 14 grandmas. And it's like, oh like Minnesota, not 14? Lithuania. Yeah. <laughs> it, he, he was a Lithuanian, <laughs> uh, Minnesotan. And uh, yeah, it, he was just every day. He'd cut by when he got back from work, he'd be just trashed. He'd limp into the fucking apartment and put death metal on the speakers and listen to it for four fucking hours till he went to sleep. Ugh, until there, he passed out and started all over again. Yeah, yeah. The, there was a dude I worked with in Vegas named Michael, who every single day he came to work, he was completely shit-faced drunk, to the point where our manager, who was cool, was telling him to put in a breath mint, take a 15-minute time out downstairs to sober up. Jesus. This guy would tell me stories about going over to Caesar's Palace and losing two grand on just any given weeknight of the week. When I mean the paychecks they were getting as servers were probably like three hundred dollars for the oh, hardest yeah. eight hours you could ever put in. So that would drive me fucking nuts. I couldn't believe what this guy was doing. But then this all came to a head when he was driving to work so shit faced at two PM one day that he cut across four lanes of traffic to get to the off ramp he needed to get to the Wynn Hotel to work. A mm-hmm. cop pulls him over, they take him to jail. He's married, by the way. His wife is nine months pregnant. She has the baby that afternoon while this motherfucker is in the drunk tank. So not only does he miss his shift at the fucking Jardin restaurant at the Wynn, he misses his child being born, this fucking drunk. Well, so, so it wasn't all bad. Career server. <laughs> was it a boy or just a girl? It was a girl and her mom was Asian. So they might Did have you see that tweet from that woman her. the other day? She's like, about to find out if I'm having a, a girl or an abortion. <laughs> a girl or an abortion yeah i feel like yeah he wanted a girl find if i'm having a little girl or an abortion <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that's what it is uh, it sucks because like I, oftentimes like when your it. manager is standing next to you and you're in one of those jobs i remember like working at the rental car place and like having to get away from my normal super speedy best cus- I was the best customer service guy you could hope for. 
the best. He's got insurance, <laughs> brother. Yeah, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here, you. Like that. That was the tier of selling. But so there's no then, like, situation in which I should get the insurance. Unless you were uninsured, no. There's no. What if I get it intend to fuck with the car? Like, like, all right. This is a Honda Accord, and there's going to be some off roading. Should yeah, I get, get the it. insurance? Yeah. Uh, if you say off roading, they will mark it. I'm not going to tell them that. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, obviously don't mention uh, off-roading and get the insurance and just make sure it's cleaned enough so that there's not a huge amount of mud under the wheel well, because if they see a bunch of that, they'll go, this was off-roading. Your uh, your insurance is declined since it precludes off-roading. So make sure you clean it before you bring it back. Oh, don't worry. The lake's going to wash all that mud off. <laughs> like, it does. I, here's good. the thing. I don't <laughs> really know what happens if you throw a car into park or reverse while you're still moving at a good clip. Like I know you're not supposed to, but I I've never seen what happens. It makes a I don't lot think of noise. Anything will anymore. It. Yeah, my guess would be nothing anymore. That there would be a, a clutch or something that would immediately be smart enough to go. Let's not kill ourselves, and you would just hear a lot of brrrr as it slipped and allowed stuff to turn instead. But what if you did it in a manual? What if you're going fucking seventy? Um, we didn't have press any the manuals. fucking clutch through that bitch in reverse and drop the clutch again. What happens? If you uh, if you're in a if you're hypothetically I, I in a, happens, if you're in a Hyundai accent flying explodes. through uh, an open uh, field of gravel drifting the Hyundai accent yeah. hypothetically, hypothetically because you can drift anything in, in that if you throw it in park right away it makes a loud noise and then and then screeches on the the gravel to a stop. I was gonna say instead of the transmission breaking it might be that the tires skid. Mm-mm. No, you would no. never get that power. Well, I guess I was tires. on gravel. I wouldn't know. You, because the, the drive shaft is carrying so uh, is carrying so much momentum. So is the torque converter. There's a lot of metal spinning in there at a high rate that's going to have to stop, arrest, and turn the other way, and then deliver that power to the tires. And it's all coming apart before we ever get it there. Like it's coming apart at the at the point the transmission attacks attaches to the engine. That that fucking I don't know what you call it, that main rod. And if you look at it, just a transmission that's in the center, that mm -hmm. it's blowing up. The transmission is going to explode. That's my guess. If you're going fast, press the clutch, put her in reverse, give it gas, might as well. And then let the clutch, <laughs> just drop the clutch. Just uh, pow. I think you'd hear a huge explosion and that transmission would fucking, I think it would, it would be a point of contact where it just exploded. I don't know if the transmission would jump out of the car know. or anything. Uh, and with race cars, all kind of crazy shit happens. There's so much torque. The engine can actually rip itself off the uh, engine mounts and go for a fucking ride. Uh, I like those. Have you ever seen where they take the trucks and they put them on the, um, the those fucking uh, stands and like floor them? I don't even know what they're fucking doing, but the trucks explode a lot. Oh, yeah, the dyno testing. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah, that's part. It's not a sport. They're just trying to make the engine more power. They're measuring the engine's output. I think it's a sport with competitors and, and a whole thing. You know, I wouldn't doubt if people competed to get the highest you results. You know the way but... they super cool PCs and, and, and they have those mm -hmm, competitions? Mm -hmm. I think they do the same oh, thing with this. the Cummins diesel. Yeah, it's coming out of there. It's leaving. <laughs> you see, that looks, uh, that looks broken. It's a Goings diesel. <laughs> <It's a good> <laughs> <piece>. <laughs> yeah you can tell that like i don't know nobody around knows it's happened yet not really no they're about to find out yeah it, I, I don't I see like people get right. hurt in these it seems fairly safe but it's spectacular when they pop and it's also got to be so expensive because the insurance doesn't cover any of this he just blew i mean shit a hundred thousand dollars what does it cost you ruined the truck probably a big number yeah Ooh. Yeah, that's a weird that's a weird one for me. I've seen a bunch of these on uh, on Reddit. I guess the engine is so heavy it's not going to fly that far. It looked like it kind of just went like and kind of I don't know. fell back I don't down. Know. I don't know. Or at least in that explosion. Yeah. That's cool though. So I I like to explode cuz I have to cover it on the rental car. Cuz I that's that's the fucking scam. That rental car insurance is bullshit because if you have a decent credit card, you're covered. Yep. Like if you have a decent credit card, your deductible is going to be like $25. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I I used to work at a rental car place and I remember they would train us to combat the credit card response where they'd be like, some people will say that their American express covers their rental insurance. And then after doing like a little bit of cursory research, even writing to people, I was like, Oh, well it does. 
Mm-hmm. Like it, it just, it does. Like there's no reason for them to buy anything else. And you don't, what you really don't want to do, don't use that MasterCard or uh, Amex insurance. That's going to make your, your rate go up more than your insurance would because they'll try and fool you at rental car places and be like, well, your insurance might not cover this car. And it's like, no, it does. Unless you buy the most bullshit liability only insurance, you're fucking fine in a rental car. I got a rental car here four days ago and my girlfriend booked it all. And she was like, Hey, Fox rental car has the cheapest rates. And I was like, Oh, I know Fox because we all, you know, when I worked at a rental car place in the airport, we all saw the other fucking stands and Fox is full of degenerates and shitty cars. And I was like, whatever, can't be that bad. We'll get a Fox car. We get, we have a Mitsubishi, uh, road shaker i guess <laughs> i don't know what the name of it is but i know that if you go above 65 miles an hour this thing trembles absolutely it's trembles. The trembles it's the opposite of the plot of speed yeah it's, it, like it's a, terrible it just, and it, it is a rental car it's a rental car with thirty four thousand miles and that may oh, not sound wow. like a lot but if you work in the rental industry, a 34,000 mile car is like meeting a 30 year old dog. <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's like a 45 year old. There's a reason that it's as shitty as it is right now. Yeah. It's, it's a 45 meeting a 45 year old prostitute, prostitute, a 25 year old dog. Those are hard miles. What happens if you put that it in reverse yeah. on a highway? <laughs> well, and now every <laughs> rental only one way car I'm into, I'll be like, why does it drive so shitty? And then I'll be like, oh, wait, uh, I know why, because I used to drive these and you <laughs> whip them around like you're mad at them <laughs> most of the also, time. The other, the other <laughs> thing, if I, if I could give anybody renting a car advice, never fucking get the uh, the gas. Never. Like in, in order for that math to work, you have to return that car bone dry. You have to push it into the lot in order to make your money yeah, on that. That Yeah, never like, prepay your gas. Make sure if you're going with a skeevy rental company, you take account of all the little tiny nicks and dings on the car prior. Like if yeah. you're going through like Hertz or Enterprise or one of the big ones, like that, they're not going to hold and your feet to the fire over a little slack. That's my biggest one. Yep. Is bring it yes. back full of gas. Because if you make them fill it up, they're going to charge you like 12. They're going to charge you the same price it costs to get drag race racing fuel that I used to buy back in the day. You can buy 110 octane ga- racing fuel cheaper than what they've got over at fucking the rental car place. Name one. CarMax or whatever. The fuck I, I remember. I remember people coming back into the return lane when I worked at the airport and they would forget to fill up. And I would like go and check the gas and the mileage and everything with a little handheld return thing. And then I would like enter in. They'd be like, oh, man, I'm so sorry. I, we forgot to get the gas. And I was like, oh, it's okay. I'll tell you how much it is. now." It, and it would be like almost like a quarter tank. And like before I would hit enter, it would be like $95 charge for gas. And I'd be like, no, back it up. Let's say that it's three quarters full. I feel like <laughs> a crook doing this. And I would just I would just retroactively change it for them. Oh, nice. I wish I'd been the I wish I'd been the one with my hands on the scale. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I do like you I, know, I get it's a little, little below a quarter. Actually, <laughs> I get a little <laughs> cheap on the full tank thing because you know you fill a tank and it hits the F, then you can fit like three more gallons in there. Sometimes you know, depending on the car or truck, but all I need to do is fill it enough so that we can agree it's near the F. You know, yeah. it, like I can save myself yeah. six dollars. I, I would always I'd take be the, the one side guy of the person lowering a fucking string down in there. Like, like put, yeah, full of means trick, I can uh, see it from the fill spout. A little bit of kerosene <laughs> mixed in there. He's getting cheap on us. Let, yeah, you know, uh, yeah. The other the other trick I would do is sorry, my camera battery ran out. I defaulted to a You're weird good. wide angle. But the uh, the other trick that I would always do is you fill it up about twenty miles from the airport. Because yep. yes. it, it still it still shows full. Yep. And like if they're gonna gouge you so much on this shit, I have no problem taking a gallon of gas from them. Yeah, that's like, similar the, to my tip. The amount, of, the amount of fucking times what Taylor was saying about how they're trained, the amount of times that they'll say to you, like, well, which insurance do you want? Not like, do you want the car rental insurance? Yep. But like as if you have a choice of like, do you want the basic or do you want the advanced? And it's like, I want the none. Oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're the choir. I'm just telling you, pro tip, Steve, 
you want a free upgrade into anything you want, book something little and then tell whatever agent there that you'll buy roadside assistance protection if they will give you a free upgrade because they'll get credit for the sale and you get a free upgrade. Oh, I got a, I got a much better way of doing it. Go for it. I, uh, I actually, pra- I actually practice my acting in this, in this environment. Like I've decided what I do, I book an economy every time and I get, I get to the counter. And first of all, I don't book with Fox because you try to pull this shit with like Fox or dollar or budget. They'll just be like, we don't give a fuck. We hate our jobs. We're putting you in a bicycle. No, they might mug the, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you, if you rent with a reputable company, um, you know, there are like, I think there are five reputable companies. If you rent with any of them. So I get to the counter, I have an economy and I just say to them, I go, uh, what size did they book me in? I booked my own thing, but I just say mm-hmm. they as if it's a company. They say, oh, it's an economy. I go, oh, my God, again, of all things today, first the flight's delayed, then my luggage, now fucking economy car. You got to be kidding me. And every fucking time, it is literally every time it's worked. Sometimes, you know, sometimes they'll go, okay, compact. Sometimes they'll go like midsize. I've had them give me a convertible. They're just like, ah, I'm having a rough day. Let me help them out. Sometimes, and and a lot of the time, they're just giving you something that's left, like leftover. Mm -hmm. If someone asks for an upgrade, it's like, hey, we got this fucking 40,000 mile Mustang convertible that nobody wants. Throw it to that guy. Tell him it's a free upgrade. Like that's usually how it goes. An an easier way to get discounts is you go up there, just like Steve said, you book your own car and then you get up there and you say, I'm here with Pepsi corporate or with, with any corporate account. I'm here with Monsanto. I'm here with Pepsi. I'm here with Coke. And if they say, I, I don't see the uh, the discount corporate code put in there, you just go, <laughs> of course, again, c- can you go in the back and, and find out John? the code? I don't remember the letters. <laughs> and then what they'll do is they'll go in the back, they'll figure out the corporate code, come out to whatever corporation you said you work from, <laughs> type that in, and then suddenly you're paying a third of the price because they have corporate, you know. That works. Uh, That'll actually work. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> My favorite uh, dumb rental car salesman moment was uh i rented a car i rent and it was uh they gave me a convertible and um i go out and i put my luggage in it and i go to start the car and it's got like a little rumble to it i was like ah fuck i don't i'm not gonna i'm not gonna drive eight hours on this shit mm-hmm. and so i flag the salesman over and i go hey th- this car the engine is rumbling already and he listens and he's like oh yeah that's a problem you know, okay we'll head in and i was like is it possible to just switch it out i have all my luggage here already you know, and I had like a bunch of bags. It was the beginning of a long trip and I had already put them in the car and uh, I was like, can you just switch it out? And he goes, oh no, it's fine. Don't worry. And he takes the keys and he like locks the car and I just look at him and I look back at the car because it's a convertible and I just take the bags out of the car he just locked. <laughs> like, what are you, what, are you, how would this, uh, yeah, what the fuck, what the fuck is that about? Yeah. <laughs> oh, fucking idiot. Yeah, the, the whole rental car industry is is ridiculous. They let their employees do whatever they want with pricing. It it's don't buy shit from them. My advice. And oh, I never buy anyone who buys a rental car. I'm just like, are you fucking insane? Like you're gonna you're gonna buy a car that people because when I drive a rental car, I don't give a fuck about the mm-hmm. transmission. I don't I don't like slowly press the gas because I know that over the course of years that wears it down. <laughs> And by the now way, imagine being an employee yeah. <laughs> and, and how, how they whip them around and drive them. If you're buying yeah. a CarMax <laughs> and you notice they have like 14 of the same car that you might be interested in, it came from a rental place. That's where they get them. They just yep. got a bunch of them. Those are all rentals. That's why you if you get a Carfax. rental car, like a used one with less than 10,000 miles, it's probably not bad at all because okay. like, Reputable companies like Hertz, Enterprise, whatever, like they have liability issues if they don't get all of the maintenance done on those. You buy a rental car at 30,000 miles, good fucking luck. Mm. That thing has been fucked in. It has been fought in. It has every <laughs> bit of debauchery it's in a killed a man. has occurred in that <laughs> Honda you're about to purchase. I don't Do know what me. to say. I bought this used car. Now I'm pregnant. I think yeah. it was <laughs> semen on the seat. <laughs> Should have got oh, the man. karma plate. <laughs> 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 oh man that's funny <laughs>